Okay, so, it's the month of October, and during this month, I like to watch horror movies. Yes, I know some people like to watch horror movies all year round, and I also like to watch horror movies at any point of the year as well. Just that in October, I put even more focus towards horror movies than I normally would. Because there are times, you know, I'm like, nah, I don't want to watch a horror movie. I'll watch something else, something funny, something action-y, you know, maybe a bit of animation there. But... This is the spooky month. It's the month of pumpkins, the month of ghosts, the month of ghouls and goblins, the month of Dracula and all those other monsters from Universal Studios and shit. It's just that kind of month. And so the five movies I'm going to be talking about will be, in this order, Willy's Wonderland, Class of 1999, The Cave... The Conjuring Part 2, and Netflix original film, The Babysitter. So, with that being said, um, full warning right here and now, there will be spoilers for each one of these films. So the reason why I named off all five films I'm going to be talking about is because, just in case you haven't seen one of these movies... Well, uh, go and watch it. And I'm probably the worst person to figure out timestamps. So anybody that's watched this all the way through, if you'd be so kind to give off, give off timestamps to when I start and stop talking about certain films, please go ahead and do so. Alright, so the first film being Willy's Wonderland. And this film is essentially uh, like live action Five Nights at Freddy's. It's killer, it's killer animatronics that are possessed by a Satanist cult. There's, there is a janitor-like character who does not speak, but is a complete fucking badass. Drinks a lot of coke. Actually, I do mean, like, actual soda coke, okay? And loves to play a pinball game. Now, this is more of your action horror genre, so... If you're looking for some, ooh, frights, whatever, you're not gonna get it. There's, there's some kind of disturbing imagery in this film. The best aspect of this film, though, is that its lead actor is none other than Nicolas Cage. Nicholas Cage plays the janitor, and he says not a goddamn word in this whole film. Not one. I'm not even joking. Go watch it. He says not a fucking peep. But you know exactly how he feels and how he's assessing the situation by how? Well, his acting. He's literally letting, letting his... Uh, body language do the talking which hmm if it was subtle body language like in the real world i probably wouldn't be able to pick it up but since it's acting acting is more so of a oversimplification of already mind school details it's a lot easier for me to pick up <laughs> and why i say this is of course because I'm not afraid to say it, I'm autistic. Yep. So okay, next movie. Um The Class of 1999, which it, which is a futuristic uh, sequel to an old movie called Class of 1984. Now, is it an actual sequel to that film? I really don't know, and I really don't think so. So Class of 1999, what is it about? Okay, so... Hmm. In schools all across America, gang violence is running rampant, and schools are a lot dangerous than they fucking used to be. By schools, this is uh, high schools, by the way. Like, you go to these high schools, you have a high chance of getting shot and killed, more so than you do than, you know, running on the, on the fucking streets. And so the U.S. government's looking into this like, hmm, we need to quell this shit somehow. 
ends up happening, they end up creating these cyborgs. Hell, not even cyborgs, just these robots who are designed to be teachers and are supposed to assess and handle the situations of these students in a orderly fashion. But since <laughs> these robots are fucking military grade, they start seeing these students as potential threats and start seeing them as operatives to thus to be eliminated. And so a couple of the gangs end up coming together to take out these teachers. This is essentially what you get when <laughs> you mix like the fucking Terminator meets Grease. Essentially. <laughs> I'm pretty sure there's probably another movie out there I could better compare it to, but that's the first thing that's just popped in my head was Grease for some fucking reason. No, no, they don't sing in this movie, okay? In case you're like, in case you have sing phobia or whatever, you're like, oh my god, are is this some shins, cr some uh, cringe shit or what, Justin? No, it's not. Now, this movie does have a lot of really, really violent fucking deaths. And I, and I mean violent as in the victims that are students and also violent to how each one of the robotic teachers get ta gets taken out. That kind of fucking violent. Like, whoa. <laughs> and since the movie was, like, made, I think, um... Hmm, I, I think, I guess, like, it was made, like, somewhere in the late 80s, early 90s. A lot of the effects are practical. Meaning that it's not CGI, okay? And there, there are some good ass fucking effects. Go check it out. All right, the third film is The Cave, which I believe came out in like 2005, some shit like that. For like early 2000s, 2000, 2010, when this movie came out. This movie's boring as shit. Oh my god, it fucking sucks. Probably until, like, maybe the last 30 minutes is decent. This movie's fucking boring. And I try to figure out, like, why this movie is so fucking boring. That I saw the ratings. PG-13. I know a lot of people argue, argue with me on this point, but I feel that PG-13 horror films are pointless. To me, it's like softcore porn. What's the fucking point? Why even have it? Why even have it exist? And yes, I do know the reason for it existing is to essentially sell more tickets and get more butts in the seats of theaters. Which, at this point in time, now, maybe back then it mattered, but nowadays that's just that ain't gonna matter no more. <laughs> Especially considering the fact that a lot of streaming services are offering same day. Uh, availability to, to watch as in theaters like um i think i think it's npc's uh peacock tv and hbo max both of those have a, hbo max already has had a slew of films that aired on their streaming service the same fucking day that it that it premiered in theaters peacock did the same thing with the Boss Baby 2, and now with uh, Halloween Kills, you know, the recent addition to the Halloween franchise. Well, I'm not talking about that film, though. <laughs> so, The Cave. Uh, best thing about it was probably the monster designs. Worst thing about it? Everything. Everything else was the worst thing about it. And the ending was just fucking stupid. And he, you know what's funny? That's a film... That, when it first came out, I was so fucking scared to see. I, I thought it was going to be terrifying. And this year, I was like, you know what? This shit's going to be terrifying. Okay, let's watch it. It wasn't terrifying at all. Fucking disappointing. Okay, on to The Conjuring Part 2. This film is amazing. Holy shit, this film is amazing. I, okay, I'm gonna be honest with y'all. I fucking hated the first Conjuring film. I thought it was boring. I had to watch this shit three fucking times 
because I kept falling asleep. Even the parts are supposed to be like hair tingling, hair raisingly, you know, exciting or make your fucking heart pound and shit. That didn't work for me. Instead, it made my heart calm and relax and made me fall a fucking sleep. Okay? As if Mr. Sandman came out of the fucking TV and was just sprinkling, you know, uh, sleep powder in my goddamn eyes. But this film, much, much different. It knew how, it knows how to grab your attention. And each single scare, it didn't take too long for each scare to happen. I'll say this much. James Wan knows when to implement a scare and when to let the story have its downtime. And I thought this film didn't really rely a whole lot on a bunch of jump scares. But there's one thing that <laughs> this film didn't do, and that'll scare me. What it did do, though, was make me laugh. I, I, I thought it was funny as shit, okay? A lot of the scenes that are supposed to be horrifying or whatever just seem to be fucking hilarious to me. Like the nun chasing after, um, oh god, what was her name? Like Catherine? No, no, Elaine, Elaine, I believe. Elaine Warren, yeah. Chasing after Elaine with, with the picture in front. I was fucking laughing. I thought this show was hilarious. Or when the dog, when the dog fucking morphed to become the crippled man or the crooked man or whatever, I thought that was just f fucking hot and hilarious. Most of the film was fucking funny to me, but then again, somebody might say that me laughing might be my my way of coping with that kind of fear. That instead of like being shook or be like, huh. Uh, shit like that, maybe laughter is my coping mechanism towards those kind of scares. And, you know what, that could easily be the case. Very easily be the case. But, I'm gonna, I'm gonna sound this hill, that I thought this shit was fucking hilarious, till the day I died. So, The Conjuring 2, it's a very good movie. Also, story-wise, it's very good as well. And... To me, I will put, I will forever and evermore put it under the the market of dark comedy. Just saying. See, that's film number four, and film number five is the Netflix Netflix original movie, The Babysitter. Great fucking film. Even though it wasn't necessarily scary. I feel it had like horror movie a aspects to it, but it wasn't scary at all. It was more funny than anything, so I think this falls under horror comedy, if, I, if I'm not mistaken. What was made it even more funny is that the main protagonist of the film, he... The way he kills all of his pursuers it's just by these cool, like these weird ass happenstances and coincidences like none of this shit um, actually there's one death that actually is planned out and that is the death um oh, I could be wrong about this I think hmm I think she's Japanese it's the only Asian chick in the group. Her death seemed to be kind of planned, in a sense, but not fully planned. It is just kind of. But everyone else's death just just so happened to happen. <laughs> oh god, I hate when I do that. Uh, by happenstance. God, that's a lot of happens, Justin. A lot of happens. Fucking a. And the end, the end of the film 
is pretty touching. And yes, there I know there is a part two to that called uh, the Babysitter Killer Queen. I believe it came out this year. And yes, I did watch it. And I'm gonna be talking about that and four other horror films in my in my next video. And if you want to know when I'm gonna put that video out, oh, that's gonna be random sometime this month. <laughs> when that being said, um, let me know what you guys think of each one of these horror films. Let me know if you watch them or not, or if you don't think some of them are horror films and. You want to kind of argue about that? Leave a comment. Shit. You like the co if you like this content, um, hit that subscribe button. Then hit that bell. That way, it's, that it, that way it's a ring a ding dingin' or whatever. Um, also, give this video a thumbs up. That way, the YouTube algorithm will know that my content is worth watching. And share this on uh, any social media platform. Blah, 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 blah. Also, something else, huh? Ah, I think that's it. Goodbye.